Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video and today I'm going to show you how to customize Siren Mastery's UI correctly. Now there are two parts to customizing Siren Mastery's UI. Number one is the UI positioning INI file, um, which has all the positioning information of a UI. And the second part are the actual image files, which all have to be PNG files. And we will all look into that a little bit later. But first we're going to look at the Siren Mastery UI documentation for customizing the UI. And as you can see here, there are two parts, customizing the images and customizing the UI positioning.ini. So I'm going to start by customizing the images. Um, you're able to change the images used to create the UI inside plugin Siren Mastery UI. The panel blank PNG file is used as the background of the UI, while the buttons inside the off and on folders are put on top of the background to create the UI. So what that means is that we here have a panel blank image. As you can see, this is the default tablet. And then I've got two folders, one is on and one is called off. And in these folders, I've got all of these very nice looking files, which are used to create the buttons to be drawn on top of the panel. So for instance, the Siren 1 button will look like this. It will be a green button uh, when it's on. And when it's off, it will be a blue button. Now something very important to note when creating a custom UI is that uh, the Siren buttons up to Siren 10 are only visible if all 10 sirens are activated in the vehicle setup. So if you're creating a UI, I recommend you do a quick vehicle setup which has all 10 sirens put in, because otherwise you won't see all the buttons. What you can also do is you can exclude various files from the on or off folder to disable a button. For instance, if you do not want the siren 1 button to appear when siren 1 is off, you can simply delete it. So right now, as we just saw, the siren 1 button, if it's off, will be blue, it will look like this. But if I just don't want it to appear at all, I can just delete this. And now it's gone, so there won't be any kind of button for Siren 1. And this is very useful for different styles of UI where you have like uh, wheels that you have to turn because you can just remove the file from the folder and it won't be drawn on top of your UI. So you won't have to worry about creating any transparent images or anything like that if you don't want it to show up. The same can also be done for the on state. If you don't want the Siren 1 button to appear when uh, Siren 1 is on, you can simply delete the, uh, the file from the on folder as well. Another thing that is important to note is that you do not have to worry about the size of your customized images as this is all handled by the user's UI scaling factor setting which can be found in the UI config dos INI file. So you don't have to worry about uh, making your UI a nice size, just make sure it all fits properly when you put all the buttons in. So as an example I'm now taking the default UI which has been created by Festival Matt, so major thank you to him. Um, as you can see I've got the background here, panel blank.png and then I've got all the buttons laid out on top of the panel uh, and they all fit nicely. So as long as you have something that looks like this, it is gonna be good. It doesn't matter which size it is, you can scale this, whatever you like, because the user can always scale it themselves in their own settings. Now, the second part to creating a custom UI is customizing the UI positioning.ini file. So let's take a look at this INI file. As you can see, I have uh, allowed you to redistribute this INI file with any custom UI patch you create. So feel free to just include this file and it'll override the user's current file if they install it correctly, so they won't have to worry about setting the buttons to be placed properly. Now the UI specific positioning settings should generally be left blank. This determines the exact position of the UI in the game. For instance, if you want it to start at uh, Xs 10 and Xs 15, you can enter those values here. However, the user's custom settings should often prevail above any of the specific UI positioning settings you might have put in, so it is recommended to leave this blank and to let the user decide the position of the UI themselves via the UI config.ini file. Now for setting the actual positions of the button, it is important to, uh, to note that all of the X offset and Y offset coordinates are relative to the starting coordinates 0, 0.0 of panel blank.png and see the documentation for further information. So if you're not sure about the coordinates, this is just a quick sketch of what coordinates look like. This is the top left of your image, 0.0, .0 and this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. So say you want something at 5.10, this would be 5.10, where x is 5 and y is 10. Now when setting the button positions, it is important to note all of these offsets are relative to the starting coordinates, 0.0, .0 of panel blank.png. 
So let's uh, take a look at an example. So the XOR set of Siren Active is 110 and the YOR set of Siren Active is 132. Now, if you go into your graphics editing program, you'll see at the bottom left, you'll see the coordinates. So what you have to do is you have to lay all the buttons out exactly as you want them over your panel blank.png and then hold your mouse onto the top left of the button you want to read. And as you can see, 109.5, round that up to 110 and 132.0. So 110 and 132. So all of these coordinates are relative to the top left of the panel blank.png file, which is over here. And this is very important when creating a custom UI because you want the buttons to be laid out properly on the user's screen. Another important thing to note while creating a custom UI is to use the Siren Mastery Reload UI command in the Rage Plugin console as this allows you to instantly reload all of the UI settings without having to unload and load the plugin again. So I hope this helps you set up your own custom UI properly and I hope this has been of use to you. If you have any questions please leave them down below. Let me know if you like the video as well and as always I hope to see you all in the next video.